Welcome, welcome, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Boys and girls. Children. Above the age of 18. It is I, the one, the only, Robert and Negro. It's December 1st. It is December 1st. And we are nine... Count them. <coughs> Nine days away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine days away. To Merry Christmas. Yes. Nine days away. To and, and, and. Which I think is actually... Even more important. The last show. Of. The year. Think about it. The next time. uh, We come at you. It will be January. 21st. Which will be uh, almost a month in to the new year. So, not only is it Merry Christmas, but it's the last show of the goddamn year. We did what people said not couldn't be done, but wouldn't be done. Which was existing past the first XPW show. The Rebirth show. After Rebirth, everyone said, oh, he's not going to do another show. Then we did the second show. And they said, ah, he's not going to do a third show. Then we did a fourth show. Ah, he's not going to do another show. Now it's, when is he going to go away? When is he going to just go away? This motherfucker... Will not go away. This motherfucker. Refuses. To leave. Now. Let me. Let me. Enlighten you. Or. In some cases. It might sadden you. And I thought long and hard about this. And I'm definitely not a big preconditioned person. But the business has changed dramatically from the time I first got in Back in the late 90s. To even when I first started watching. Wrestling. Which was back in the early 80s. The business has changed dramatically. And I've got a year under my belt. And I've been able to be front row. I've been able to be in the cheap seats. 
And of course I've been able to be on the stage. And I will tell you this. Doing the exact same thing that we're doing. Doing the exact same thing that GCW is doing. Doing the exact same thing that everybody else is doing besides WWE. And a lesser extent, but still, in that ballpark, AEW, is fucking retarded. And what I mean by that is, no one's doing anything different. No one's doing anything creative. Now, of course... We do different storylines and we try to create matches that you get emotionally invested in. But we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not reinventing the wheel. It's, okay, here's this death match. Oh, okay, here's this matchup. Oh, okay, this person's never wrestled that person before. Oh, okay, I'm going to try to get some heat with some wrestlers that people fucking hate. Not just the characters, good guys and bad guys, but they fucking hate them. But ultimately, nobody's doing anything that's different. And there's a fucking ceiling. There's a goddamn ceiling as to where to go. Listen, and Mins, plug your ears, because the Mins kind of has his toe in, in two different teams, but no better than look at GCW. Here's this company that tries to model themselves after ECW. And remember how much shit we got. And here's GCW straight up with merchandise. Looking like ECW. Not all their merch, but they actually have a t-shirt and a hoodie and a hat that is the ECW logo. And people actually buy it. I've seen people talk about it and like, oh, I want that. But here's the thing that we all did back in the 90s. And it goes to what I'm saying as far as a ceiling. So back in the 90s, the goal was small show, small show, a little bigger show, a little bigger show than that, a little bigger show than that. Oh my God, we have pay-per-view, we've arrived, TV deal, and then you never look back. You never look back. There is no small show, small show, bigger show, pay-per-view, television deal, fucking small show. That's not how it works. If you did that back in the 90s, that was considered not successful. So 
So when you look to a company like GCW, and they go, small show, small show, growing, getting bigger, we've arrived, Hammerstein Ballroom, pay-per-view, we've arrived, we've sold the place, and then you go back to 300 people here, fucking Fight Plus there, you always gotta be fucking growing, you always gotta be never looking back to what you did six months ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago, two years ago. You always have to be growing. End of story. You always have to be growing. So when we used to talk about AEW and the ratings. 600,000, 800,000, 900,000, 1 million, 1.2 million, a million, 900,000, a million, 700,000, 500,000 on a different channel on a different night interrupted by basketball. Back to 800,000. So basically what you're saying is it's never getting past a million fucking viewers. Three plus years on television. That's it. That's it. That's the fucking ceiling. That's it. So there is a ceiling. And when I look at the landscape and I go, okay. So so where where to? Where to? Okay. We're we're in Jersey now. Heart ballroom. All right. Six shows, seven shows. We can't get any more people in there. We have to evolve and move to a bigger venue. Or maybe we'll go to Florida and we'll do a show there. But you're not not growing. You're not doing something new. You're not doing something fresh. Oh, this wrestler is not with that company anymore. Now we'll bring him in and we'll smash him in the head with fucking light tubes. You're still doing what everybody else is doing. Oh, we're going to go to Europe now. Oh, we're going to do a co-tour with Rise. Oh, we're going to go to Japan. And we're going to go do... The same old, same old. Now for some people, that is successful. But let me tell you guys. I'm not looking next year to be doing the exact same thing we're doing now. Except our venues are bigger. Big Fucking deal. Our venues are bigger and we have more people. But we're still doing the same thing and we're still doing the same formula. We're all still fighting for something that has a fucking ceiling. You have to look and say, what is being done by the few? And I'm not talking about bigger venues, more people.
storylines. You have to look to WWE. And you have to look to AEW. And you have to say, what are they doing that nobody else is doing? Or maybe very few. At least nobody in our stratosphere. Nobody in the JCWs, the GCWs, the NWAs, the Impacts. Because remember, you're only going to grow an audience so much. You're only going to grow an audience with what we are all doing so much. So the question becomes, what is the next Step. Because the next step isn't to do a show in Atlantic City at the showboat. The fuck? Everybody's done it. That's GCW's home base. The Minz has worked there. God knows how many. Fucking Minz has done a show there. A, 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 a weed convention. You have to think what can be done that other people aren't doing. And we touched on this yesterday. And I'm more passionate about it today because I've talked to a handful of other people. Rather it's men's, rather it's Schlack, or rather it's a few guys that I'm friends with over at NWA. And I'm not going to tell you it's going to be January. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be February. But I am going to tell you that the XPW live weekly show will be next year. And that will be the swan song. And what I mean by that is, if it doesn't work... If it doesn't work and that doesn't grow the fan base quicker, more robust than any of the other indies, then it's time to fucking hang it up. I I kid you not. Because being on a six-year trajectory, and let's face it, everybody touts GCW as the most successful fucking indie. Well, let me tell you something. If I am where they are six years from now, fucking shoot me, bro. Seriously. Fucking shoot me. If I'm doing this for six fucking years. And I haven't exploded. Six fucking years. Six. Think about how long six fucking years is, bro. Schlack told me that. Six fucking years. Six years. 
Nah. No fucking way. Nope. Nah. So, six years is not the game plan of XVW. Shit, we did it quicker than fucking six years. Back in the late 90s. I mean, I know the wrestling business was different. But in fucking six years... I was still playing at the Reseda goddamn country club. Forget about it. So, the only answer is a weekly live TV show. That's it. That's the that's the last hurrah. And my buddy in the NWA, my pal, my good friend. He echoed it before I did. He said, if you could pull it off. And it is a episodic live weekly show. That ends with a fucking cliffhanger. And wrestling fans are tuning in. To see what happened to Schlack. Or Necro Butcher. Or Drake. Or whoever else comes into that realm of XPW. If you can't get. traction if you can't get a hundred two hundred three hundred thousand people to watch that on a weekly basis then call it quits call it all quits listen access TV all right Access TV, granted, it's not in every single home, but guess what? Close to 60 million people get Access TV. You know what Impact does every single week? You know what Impact does every single week? Anywhere between 60 and 90,000 people. That's it. Now, why do you think that is? You don't say because the wrestling sucks or not. Because it doesn't. I'm not saying it's the greatest thing in the world. But it's taped wrestling. They tape it in the beginning of the month. The day after they tape it. Everybody in the wrestling world knows who won, who lost, what the angles are. And the only people that are watching it are the die-hard fucking wrestling fans who live and breathe wrestling. They don't watch anything else. They don't watch football. They don't watch baseball. They don't fucking do nothing except watch wrestling, go in their basements, Go online, hit Twitter, and bitch about wrestling. When we all sit here and go, how do we get the wrestling fans back from the 90s? How do we get the wrestling fans back interested in wrestling? And everybody, everybody talks about angles, talks about let the wrestlers be more natural. Remember that shtick? WWE is too scripted. Just let them talk. 
Look at AEW. They just let the guys talk. They just let them do whatever they want. Look how popular they are. Yeah. They're, they're, they, they haven't moved a fucking needle. They're exactly at the ceiling. That you would be at. If you had a fucking billion dollars to throw at product. And have a roster full of 8 trillion wrestlers. You don't know what the fuck to do with them. You can only focus on so many goddamn wrestlers. But that one thing that nobody ever brings up is live TV. Nobody ever brings that up because for the big guys or the big guy, it was just natural. when we're all sitting around talking about how do we draw? How do we get people's interest? Oh, I know. Slack against Angel. Okay. We'll bring over a Japanese wrestler. Yeah, that'll be it. We'll draw a thousand people. Well, obviously that's not going to happen. And obviously, my goal with XPW is never to look back. My goal is, once we get out of one venue, we then move on to another venue. Or once we get to a certain level, we never go back to that level. Once we do a goddamn pay-per-view that is of epic proportions, we never, ever go backwards. That's just great business. And for me, doing everything that we just did this year, except next year, is not a success. Because obviously, obviously it's going to grow. But again, what's the ceiling of that growth? Obviously... Show after show. You're going to get what you're going to get. Then there's going to be a limit. Because you're only going to be limited to a certain draw of a certain group of people. That attend indie shows or that type of entertainment. And rather it's us But at some point Somebody's going to get out there and do it Think about this, okay Me GC NWA Even the biggest draws at IWTTVWTV Everybody depends on streaming money every goddamn fucking 
month. Everybody does. Everybody does. There's not one company I have mentioned that doesn't depend on that streaming revenue. <coughs> so, just the basic fact. That every single month, everybody is dependent on the streaming revenue would make you go, well, why the fuck then doesn't somebody create a streaming TV show? If WWE's entire business model garnered them hundreds of millions of dollars with a streaming service that you could only get your pay-per-view on Via that streaming service, they cut out all the cable operators. So they must have been on to something there. And then, they made a billion dollar deal with fucking Peacock. They have a free TV show. On fucking Fox and NBC and all of their fucking pay-per-views are streamed. So, using that as the Maserati model, how the fuck has nobody in our world who depends on fight and IWTV money every single fucking month went, huh, I wonder if well, we will be doing that. Because my business model was always going to be that. And then the federal government derailed us. But if you think the trajectory of XPW was going to be me Announcing some new venue in some fucking, you know, we're going to Tennessee, we're going to Alabama, we're going to Oklahoma, we're... Nah. Nah. That's great. That's your business model, that's great. If you got a backer that's going to dump tons of cash into you. Because you got a nice fucking tax write-off for the season. Awesome. But not, not, not us. So, more than ever, WWE.
2023 will see the live XPW TV show. And if it doesn't work, we will not go silently because we'll go kicking and screaming. But we will be done. Man, I'm 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 serious. That's how that is how that is how definitive two thousand and twenty-three is gonna be now. Again, I didn't say it's starting on January twenty first. And I didn't say it's starting on February twenty first. And I'm not saying it's starting December 1st of 2023. But as we speak, the wheels are in motion. As I talk with Schlack, as I talk with Minz, as I talk with Mike Moran... As I talk with various people, then I go, okay, this is where we have to be. This is where we have to be. This is where we have to be. Did a lot of did a lot of soul searching today. I'm serious. While I was sitting there in City Hall filing for permits, looking for parking, just a big pain in the balls. And then I would have you know five minute conversation here or a ten minute conversation there. And, Order up a plane ticket here and order up a plane ticket there. Have Schlack tell me, hey, we got, you know, death match of the fucking year. And I go, okay, that's great. But what the fuck did it get us? And what's it going to get us in the future? At, at, at what point does that draw us, you know, thousands of people into the building? At what point does that generate hundreds of thousands of people glued to their computers or glued to their televisions? And no matter how many of those matches we put on, Every single fucking week, or every single fucking month, or every single fucking year. And then we tweet about it, and then we post a clip online. It's never going to do anything more than what we can do, because there is a goddamn ceiling. But the live program... Creates an entire different fucking world. So... Look for that. That's what we're gearing up for. And it's going to take a lot. (laughs) It's going to take a lot. And when we talk about it, I sometimes go, fuck. Maybe just blasting each other with fucking light tubes. 
it would be a whole hell of a lot easier. <laughs> Maybe that'll just be easier. Maybe that's a fuck it. But then I go, nah. Nah, because if this doesn't work, then what's the fucking point? And I think it can. I think it can. So, with that being said, there you go. Mark from Buffalo said it perfect. It's fucking do or die. It's do or die. That's it. It's do or fucking die. And that's the only thing that's going to make us stand out. It's the only thing that's going to make us different. It's the only thing that will force people that are not inside the quote-unquote deathmatch community Talk, react, be interested in. It's the only thing. It's the only thing. Rob Black's Rob Black show be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Rob Black's Rob Black Show. Well, uh, just to not go back, but there was a brief moment of time, okay? And I don't know what was in the water. I don't know what was on the buffet table. But there was a brief moment of time. Rather it was the Matt Cardona arrival or the original... Moxley arrival. But there was a brief moment of time when those shows that GCW did that had those types of surprises felt big. It felt special. And those are the things that if can be created... On a weekly basis, live, in a TV show format, can captivate not just deathmatch fans, but a wide range of wrestling fans. That, that, my friends, can be done. So, just got to give credit where credit is due once in a while. But anyways, it's Rob Black's Rob Black Show. Nine days. Nine days. I'm going to start spitting out the card tomorrow. On what's going to go on in Christmas. 
Who's going to wrestle who? Well, and see, Leanne said, I feel like you definitely need the stories to pull the regular fans in the death match. Well, now, you got to remember something, Leanne. And I know uh, we've kind of, because we've had uh, death matches, we've kind of been, I don't want to say pigeon toed, because that would make it seem like. I don't necessarily like death matches. But we're not a death match company. And I and I and I don't ever want fans to believe that. So when they don't get Nine death matches, they get disappointed. XPW was always about a death match champion. And the death match champion defended his belt in a death match. And then we had other matches. There were deathmatch elements, rather it was chairs or things of that nature. But the glass and the tubes and all that shit was exclusive to the deathmatch. Now, yes, we've done a lot of it. In these last X amount of shows. But the LA show that we just had didn't have as many. I think we only had two death matches, if I recall. Now, the Jersey show was different. Because as Schlack said, you got to give them everything. You got to give them everything. They are so jaded. We got to give them everything. So we had to give them Death match, death match, death match. But eventually, we're going to have to go back to the origins of XPW. Which is great matches. And I'm not talking your fucking flippy matches. And I know... There's people out there that hate using that term "flippy." It's almost like a it's in the in the in the new in the new wrestling community. It's it's almost like you're saying something racist. Flippy man! Oh, oh my god! I can't believe he said that. Oh my god! How could you talk about Starboy Charlie like that? Whoa! Don't ever talk about that again. No. So I'm not talking about Starboy Charlie matches, okay? I'm just saying, keep your Schlack and Drake match special. Keep it special. Keep your Sage and Ludark 
match with Cat Martini special. Don't go. Here's Slackage uh, 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 Drake. Here's that girl in the bed. Here's a, yes, we did that. But at some point, we're going to pull back. I'm telling you guys, we're going to pull back. I know Slack right now is like, no, what are you doing? We'll, we will lose the, fa- we'll lose the piss jug guy. The piss jug guy. He won't come to the shows anymore. What are you doing, Rob? You fucking asshole. Well, I think the piss jug guy will appreciate some fucking build up. Okay. I believe that the diehard death match fan base will appreciate a little build up. That way, when they're watching X amount matches. That are good matches. Like I said. We're not talking about. Just a bunch of Starboy Charlie matches. But some fucking good storytelling. Some hardcore. You go through a fucking table or a door. Take a goddamn chair shot. Take some crazy fucking bump out on the fucking. uh, On the concrete. But build it up man. Build it up. So in that hour span or hour and a half span, when they finally get that that first light tube bundle that shatters over motherfucker's head, they just fucking explode. They fucking explode and they appreciate it. And it's special. Scott Easy likes Starboy Charlie. Okay, so do I. I keep thinking of the other one that I, the other reference I always use. There's one other one I, not Akira, but, ah, uh, oh, fuck, I can't remember. There was one other fucking flippy guy that I used to always uh <laughs> I used to always use as a reference. But yeah. So that that, that that's my only uh, that's my only kind of thing with the deathmatch overkill, so to speak. Shark Boy. Shark Boy is good. Uh, nine days, fuckers. Nine days. So, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, go get your tickets. See, ask Danny Ramirez. If he's gotten any flyers from Kyle Supreme. We should, you know, I know Shark Boy is like trademarked and copywritten, but we should come up with something like Piranha Man or, uh, you know, I don't know. You got Shark Boy, Piranha Man. Um, a Barracuda Girl. Um, I don't know. Hammerhead. Ooh, I like that. Hammerhead. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Well, Lowrider, that would be the commercial. And the commercial comes on, it goes, watch XPW TV. We, you know, watch the weekly XPW TV. Or this man. And it goes to Teddy Hart, and he's like, I'll fucking choke you out. And then it, you know, it, it cuts. I don't know, dildo. Not dildo, man. <clears throat> All right, you want to? Ma- Here, I'll give you guys a fucking. You want a match? I'll give you guys a. Fu- I'm gonna give you guys a fucking match. Now you're not gonna know how the match plays. I'm not gonna give you the match. I'm not. I can't. I can't. I can't. Tomorrow, I'll give you guys the match. Okay, I'll give you... I'm going to give you two matches tomorrow. Okay, I'll give you one match. All right, here we go. Bestia. Six. 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 Will be taking on Matt Cross. Yes, Bestia six 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 will be taking on one half of the former X. P W Tag Team Champion The team known as Youth in Asia We'll be going against Matt Cross Damien six 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 or Bestia 666 will be taking on Matt Cross. Damien took on Matt Cross last time. So, I think it'll be a fucking, I think it's going to be a killer match. I think that's going to be a killer. I think that's going to be a banger. That's going to be a banger of a match. So, let's not let let's recap. You got Willie Mack going one on one against The Juice Juventud Guerrero. And now you got Mac Cross Looking for his revenge. Against Damien 666's son. Bestia. 666. There's two matches. For Mary fucking... Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you I can't. Tomorrow is going to be a big reveal. And and those of you who don't follow us on Facebook or Twitter or any of that shit, the juicy one, the juicy, juicy, juicy. Okay? The juicy one, juicy, 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 will be In the XPW Arena in Newark, New Jersey. On January 21st. Yes, January 21st.
I like that double D. I like that. January 21st. The juicy one. We'll be having a very special juice bar. The XPW Arena in Newark, New Jersey. Juicy, juicy, juicy. So, I thought that was pretty big. I don't know, has the juicy one ever been to the heart fucking ballroom? Which is now the XPW Arena? Has the juicy one ever gone to Newark? Gonna have to get a Lucha flyer. Or at least a flyer that's got uh, the great uh, Hoovy on the cover in Spanish. Danny Ramirez will fill that out. And uh, we'll get the men's to uh, put that together. The fucking men's. Only the queens. XLAW. Oh, the juicy one. Fucking juice. Will Danny be on the flyer as the rep? Danny, yeah. Dan- Danny, Danny doesn't. Danny doesn't speak Spanish anymore. <coughs> Danny didn't answer the question. Did you get the flyers? Oh, God help me. Uh, Anyways, there's some big announcements. I'm going to give you guys two more match announcements tomorrow. Along with the TV show will air. Okay, so you can have a TV show. You can have two more match announcements, that'll give you four. Four! Four! (sighs) God help me. Alright. We'll take uh, 30 seconds and then we will... um, Wind it down. Not wind it up. We will wind it down. It's Rob Black. It's a Rob Black show. And my, uh, my, my cancer or whatever the fuck I got is, uh, Is uh, definitely coughing away. Be right back. (laughs) Extreme gifts. From pop culture gifts to adult fun. T-shirts, mugs, socks, fun, topical gifts for all ages. Then there's mature fun, massage lotions, naughty games, toys, and lingerie. Extreme Gifts specializes in Delta 8 CBD, cartridges, edibles, vaporizers, and vaping liquids. The selection of glass products is amazing from Kratom, Kava, Flower, and so much more. Extreme Gifts, 1694 Penfield Road, next to the original Steve's Diner. You guys want to hear something completely crazy? And I'll leave you guys with this. And it has nothing to do with wrestling. Okay. So. <laughs> I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to fucking break this down. Okay. Uh, well. I. Robert Zakari, The. Porn mogul. Okay. Okay.
belong to a Facebook group. And it's about pleasure professionals. So people that buy products for porn stores and things like that. Uh, I belonged to it, you know, X amount of time ago. I don't know, you know, not like the last month or two. It's like been a while. But I mean, obviously it's Rob Black, but I'm just saying the non-wrestling part of me, the porn guy, yeah. Um, Belongs to this group. So I see a post come through and it says okay I have a moral and ethical question and it shows a picture of the bottom of a dildo box and it says I have a moral and ethical question should we be selling items that represent something that is not allowed in real life this dong which multiple companies make the same thing, clearly states it is a replica of a canine. I could argue both ways, but wanted to have an intelligent discussion. Let's see if that could happen. So I'm like looking at it, and it says, Hellbound. Canine penis silicone dildo. And I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I fucking reading this right? And sure as shit, it is a dildo that is resembling a dog's cock. And it's a line called Creature Cocks. And they make dog cocks, horse cocks, cat cocks, octopus tentacles, And then they make alien cocks. What a cock of an alien would look like. A reptilian cock. And it's a whole discussion. Chris Joy says, I am the owner of a fantasy theme manufacturer. And 99% of our items are some kind of creature cock. Rather it be from video games, movies, fiction, books, fantasy lore, you name it. I don't think customers of these products are perverse human beings who are looking to do harm to innocent animals and shouldn't be labeled as such. Sex is supposed to be fun, exciting, stimulating, etc. And products like this bring something different to the market. That hurts literally nobody. People that are on here saying, I would never yuck or someone's yum, but I'd never carry these, are doing just that. They're making a decision based on their personal feelings towards the subject matter to not carry these items and instead just carry a generic line of big old vibrating penises and dildos. The fantasy theme market is growing rapidly and we literally can't keep up with the demand for new designs. I hear from people every day who want something made that is body safe and not something that they've made themselves or some other horrible creation from someone's garage. But whatever, rant over. If you don't want to carry them, then I'm gladly will take the sale. (laughs) 
So, I leave you with a dildo that is of a Dog's cock. Now. Now. Some of you are shocked. Some of you are appalled. But here's. The punchline. I literally. Interrupted. My sales rep. At the number two adult distributor as far as toys and lingerie. His name's Ron. He's like the vice president of sales. Company's called Williams Trading. They're out of actually Jersey. And I hit him up. I said, Ron, what are you doing? He goes, I'm actually hunting right now. I go, what the fuck you mean you're hunting? I go, why'd you fucking take my call then? He goes, well, it's you. He goes, I got to take a call from fucking Rob Black. He goes, what's up? And I go, how do I get my hands on these Dog dick dildos. <laughs> he goes, what? I got these dog dick dildos. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a horse cock. We got a fucking dog. I go, how do I get these? And how have you never fucking told me about them so I can put them in my store? He goes, I get back Monday. What do you want? I go, I want three of a number. He goes, oh, we got five different kinds of the dog dick ones and three of a different kind of the horse one. I go, give them to me. (laughs) He goes, do you want the octopus? I said, how many different ones? He goes, we got two different octopuses. I go, I want those fuckers too. It's Rob Black's Rob Black Show. We will see you guys tomorrow night.